just won the children's Bible contest. You're going on a trip around the world. I hope you have a good suitcase because you're going to do some big time traveling and there are a lot of missionaries around the world just waiting for you.
Thank you so much, Rose. <laughs> Mom, there's three roaches, two spiders, and a frog in there. Let's hope the frog has the roaches for dinner. One of the roaches looked bigger than the frog. Missionaries need a lot of grace from God to adjust to their new, unfamiliar living conditions. There's no air conditioning here either. Hey, I know we'll get your mind off the bugs. What's that? It's a press pass. I'm making you an official good news reporter on the trip. That means you'll be doing interviews with the missionaries that you meet. You will also need to keep your eyes open for newsworthy items to report on. You know, things your friends back home might find interesting. That sounds great. I can't wait. I think after seeing that mud hut, I may have my first story to report. Way to go, Hillary. Wow, how do they do that? Those pots must be heavy. Lots and lots of practice, I'd say. Amazing. Rose, wait, can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Do you have to carry water like that every day? Yes, it's the only way to get water to her home for cooking and washing. Don't your faucets work? What is a faucet? Well, you see, hmm, there's a pipe that comes into a house, and the water flows in the pipe. And at the end of the pipe, there's a special opening for the water to come out. And usually, it has a knob or lever that lets you stop or start the water flow. A faucet sounds like a good thing. But I guess faucet or no faucet, people always need water. We can't live without it. That's why the Bible calls Jesus the water of life. There's no life without water. There's no eternal life without Jesus Christ. We have to meet the Rousters. It's your first missionary interview. Someone's gonna clean that up, right? Excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on a second, Hillary. Let's wait until Heinz has the shack set up. Are you ready, Heinz? Uh, okay, go. It seems like you're in the middle of 
of nowhere here. How do you survive? We live 480 miles from Kinshasa, the capital city of Zaire. Our truck goes in three to four times a year. We have to buy diesel fuel, gas, and groceries for us and the people who live on the mission. That's a long trip just to buy food and supplies. Do you ever get any special treats? Well, we get monkey meat along the road in Zaire. We just pick up the meat with our fingers to eat it. Think I'll stick to mac and cheese, but I guess missionaries have to eat some strange things. What about morning meetings? Don't you miss watching TV? We do have a TV, and if there's enough power from the solar panels on a hot day, then sometimes we can watch a video in the afternoon or evening. It sounds like missionaries have to give, give up a lot. Well, I guess so, but we're glad to do it. We had a vision to reach children. We started this mission called Every Child Ministries, specifically with the vision to help the African churches learn to teach Sunday school, so that way they could reach their children. What's your favorite part of your mission? The children are so friendly and open, very eager to learn. Many of them are from poor families. Sometimes I look down and see a whole row of little bare feet. They don't eat well at home, but they are so enthusiastic about the things of the Lord. Would you say that it takes a certain special type of person to be a missionary? Not at all. Any Christian can be a missionary, and you don't even have to leave your hometown to do it. There are people right in your neighborhood who need the Lord. Just love them and tell them about Jesus. our coal in the bottom of a gold mine. Hillary. It must be a long way underground. My ears are popping down. Right now we are 260 meters below the surface. That is more than 700 feet. I sure am glad we have these flashlights. I'd hate to try to find our way out of here without them. It's totally dark down here except for these flashlights. Do you remember what Jesus said about being the light of the world? 
Yes, he saves us from spiritual darkness. Like these flashlights save us from total physical darkness. Also considering that people have made millions from mining this gold, it makes me think of what Jesus said about riches. What profit is to a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? So in God's economy, one person is far more valuable than all the gold that's ever been mined in South Africa. Wow, yes, and God is our treasure. Like all this gold, he surrounds us with his glory. Right, we just have to look for his fingerprints everywhere. Welcome to the kingdom of Swaziland. If you're a kid in Swaziland, one of your chores might be to take care of goats or cows. In these big, beautiful hills, there's lots of little farms. That's right, Hillary. There's also lots of round houses. Do you know why the Swazis build their houses round? No. Well, lots of Swazis believe that an evil spirit is in the corner of buildings, so they eliminate the corners. Oh. Huh. And guess what else they have here in Swaziland? Really wild animals. Hello, Hillary. My name is Jason, and this is Emma. It's almost time for you to surprise, Hillary. We'll wait with you. The Jeep should be here any minute. I can't wait. I love animals. So do I. There are so many different kinds that I never get tired of seeing them. Remember in Genesis when God told Adam to name all the different types of animals? Yes. yes. He must have had a lot of fun doing that. I would name the giraffe Slide. I would name the ostrich bony backwards because it's got such bony legs and his knees bent backwards. I think God had a, sense, had a sense of humor when he made that animal. Ah, I would name the zebra jailhouse because it has black and white stripes. I think the hippopotamus should be called, um, hippopotamus! hippopotamus. <laughs> what a wonderful gift God gave us when he created so many amazing animals. See you later! Wish you were coming home! Tell us all about it when you get back!
It's helping to spread the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are really thankful to have such a tool as this. What a great way to spread the word. With help from Transworld Radio, these Swazis can get an earful of programs that point them to Jesus. And it is our prayer that uh, more of these radios will be available so that more friends like you, little ones, boys and girls, could listen to God's word. So I understand that Trans World Radio is all about transmitting the gospel of Jesus Christ by radio. Now they have stations all over the world. How did this station get started? In 1973, Trans World Radio started building this entire transmitter station. One of the problems was there was no building set in the area. It had come from 25 miles away. We prayed about it then. This little river flooded one night. When the flood waters went back down, we found that the Lord I deliver the sand right to our door here. And that sand is what we use building the entire transmitter station. That's amazing! And it kind of gives a whole new meaning to building your house, building your house upon the sand. <laughs> Do you think any of the neighboring countries can hear your broadcast too? Certainly. We broadcast in French as of today. Year. It must be hard to minister to people when you can't see them or know if they're responding to the message. How do you keep going? We just keep doing what the Lord wants us to do. To do and trust the Lord for the outcome. For a long time, we we broadcast to Zaire and never knew of any results. But after many years, we visited there and found that over 20,000 members had come to know the Lord as their Savior through these broadcasts. 20,000? Yes, 20,000 
members had come to the Lord as their Savior through these broadcasts. Wow, it must have been so exciting to find that out. Certainly. We have the potential of reaching 18 million people with our broadcast of everyone to their, their radios. E even the biggest stadium in the world doesn't hold that many people. Not even close. Another good thing is that on the radio, they can't see us, so we don't have to make up to our program. We just come in and start talking. Apostle Paul wrote that creation reveals God's nature and his eternal power. He also wrote that all people are without excuse because if they really want to know God, all they have to do is open their eyes and consider his creation. When you're 25 miles away from the falls, you can see the spray of it. And when you're four miles away, you can hear the roar. 143 million gallons of water flow over these rocks every minute. The Africans call Victoria Falls the smoke that thunders. Others call it one of the seven wonders of the world. Welcome to Zimbabwe. Not only did I get a glimpse of one of the seven wonders, I was about to find a new hero. In 1855, the first European to see Victoria Falls was Dr. Livingston. There was a famous reporter named Stanley who looked for him for almost a year. And Hillary, do you remember? Oh, I know what he said. He said, Dr. Livingston, I presume? That's right. It was that encounter that raised people's awareness of the needs here in Africa, because Dr. Livingston was a mission pioneer who ministered both the gospel and ministered to people's physical needs. Maybe God is calling you to be a missionary pioneer, just like Dr. Livingston. It was time for a visit to the local team hospital in Zimbabwe. There were hungry kids and sick people who were waiting for medicine. Dr. Ross said there just wasn't enough to go around. She's, you have to support the hand. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's not so easy, is it? Yeah, there you go. Many of the Africans that visit the hospital have a disease called AIDS. It won't go away. And Dr. Ross says she's in danger of catching it almost every day. We only have two doctors now. We both do everything. We see eyes, ears, feet, and skin diseases. And we operate and we do everything. It sounds so difficult. Don't you get scared that you're going to catch one of those awful diseases you treat? What made you want to come here and put yourself in danger? I trust in the Lord. He put the desire in my heart to want to do this. 
And since Christ gave his life for me, I very much wanted to give my life for him. So I humble myself and allow him to use me in this place however he seems fit. Do you find people are more open to receiving Christ as their Savior when they're sick? Yes, definitely. They know that they are helpless and they have nothing to offer God. A gift of salvation is a free gift of God becomes very clear to them because well, they are sick. Like in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, where it says, By grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Exactly. Every year we have quite a few people who come to know the Lord in the hospital. For some, I think they only become aware of their need for salvation because they are sick. Dr. Ra, Dr. Ra. How may I help you? I'm afraid what will happen to me. You are very sick. Are you ready to meet Jesus? No, how could I be ready? I do want to go to heaven. I think you remember me explaining to you how all people have sinned, and that puts a barrier between us and God. Yes, I've sinned. So how can God want me to be with him? You only have to believe that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take your punishment for you. The payment has been made, and that makes you right with God for your salvation, not in anything else. Hillary, can you tell them what it says in John 3, verse 16? It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's true, I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ. about Africa. What did you learn here? Well, I learned that there are so many hard things about being a missionary. I think about huge bugs, dangerous animals, no air conditioning, carrying water, driving hundreds of miles to go shopping, no TV, weird food, scary diseases, and a bunch of other problems that make it hard to do your work. In America, we think it's a big bummer and nothing is worth all that. But the missionaries I met are just so glad to serve and obey the Lord. They don't mind the hardships. God gives them the grace and joy to do what He's called them to do. And they trust Him to provide, to provide for all their needs. And so He does. Awana, 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 come play with us. Do I have time to go to Awana before we leave? Sure. I don't know what that is. Wait for me.
Okay. 